One of the most fun things that you can do in environment art is learning how to tell a story without using any words. Every space you design should have a purpose. Growing up in class, I would draw all the time. My friends, were, we were all really big gamers. So we'd think about, you know, what kind of levels we like to play. So in class, instead of, you know, taking notes or whatever, we went up drawing maps and stuff of the worlds we wanted to build. And then, you know, we take these maps and go home and actually build them and, you know, try and play them. Some are more fun than others. Some things should stay on paper. So I first got my start, you know, working on games back in 1999 when I first started modding Unreal Tournament. It all started with me making character skins and maps for that game. And then Half-Life 1 came out and I started modding, making maps and mods for that. Every major game release since like 99, I'd pick up the game and if I had like a level editor, I'd build levels for it. I'd just been doing it for almost 21 years now. As an environment artist, I build the world that the player experiences throughout the game. You know, and that's everything from like the architecture, to, you know, the landscapes and the props that make up that world. So we usually work really closely with design, where, you know, design will kind of come up with like the loose block out of the world, and then we help make sense of what that block out is in a way that the player can relate to. One of my favorite spaces that I worked on on World War II was uh, for the zombies mode. It was in the first map, the final Reich, the uh, medical room. Initially, all I was given was just a, essentially a very long hallway and we knew we wanted something to happen related to the Easter egg in that space. My first thoughts was this is where the zombies would be created. So I thought a lot about, you know, how exactly would a mad scientist stitch zombies together? Well, he'd have collections of body parts, he'd have, you know, all sorts of guts and viscera, and he'd probably have machines that have to sew them together or, you know, chop people up and put them back together. So we'd create very, you know, basic shapes of what these machines would look like, and we start populating the space with it. And then, uh, you know, we put it in the level and, you know, designers would make sure it's still playable. And then, you know, sometimes it would give them ideas about what we could then do related to the Easter egg with that. And there'd be this back and forth over the whole development cycle as we add more to the space, you know, adding more nitty gritty details. And in this way, we start tying, you know, into the psyche of the mad doctor himself. So the biggest challenge of working as an environment artist in AAA is learning to work together as a team with all these different disciplines. I started, you know, just making mods, but that was very much a solo endeavor. But when you're working with other people, it is a totally different game. So I very much consider making games to be a team sport, and in that way it's really important to understand the concerns and considerations needed for each different discipline. For environment art, I really value what, how the whole thing looks, but design, who I work very closely with, has a very different concern. Theirs is all about how does it play? How does it feel to a player? Even though we want to achieve very similar goals, the path we take can be very different. My name is Sammy Bashir, and I'm an environment artist at Sledgehammer Games.